Right, some first impressions of this uh, version of the Mini Mill. Various different manufacturers seem to be making it. Uh, this is called the 550 watt mill uh, from a Chinese manufacturer. I think they're all Chinese. I think 550 watts is the input wattage of it. I don't for a moment think that the motor on here is that much bigger than the motor that you would find on the Clark or any other mill. Uh, no way really of telling, but I'm going to assume it's about the same size. It's not a brushless motor, it's a brushed DC motor with variable speed control, which I'll turn down. Variable speed control, direction control, uh, stop button, fuse on the side. Uh, I've taken off the plastic cover, but there is a plastic cover that uh, protects the, um, the um, drawbar, which is what holds it in. This one supposedly came in two sorts, MT3 and R8 taper on the spindle, uh, unable to supply the R8 taper one, so I had to take the MT3 spindle taper. I quite like the fact that the, uh, the handles on it are made out of uh, turned alloy, so they're quite nice feel, a nice finish to them on there. I've adjusted the um, jibs, so there's no play on any of the dimensions on here. You've still got quite nice easy movement on that, which I think is the x-axis. The y-axis is quite stiff. I've made that stiff. Um, maybe that's laziness. It just just felt right for me to make that quite stiff. That's nicely machined. Uh, one interesting point that I noted was that you've got very nice machined surface there, but it's not a bearing surface, and the bearing surface is rather rough uh, in there. But uh, I'll live with that because it does. These actually move reasonably smoothly. Hopefully I'm not going to crash into the tool while playing with it. You do on this one have a, a drainage point if you did have, have any coolant on it. Uh, I've trammeled the, or whatever they are, I had a magnetic thing, uh, the, the table uh, at about, I don't know, six inches away from the spindle. Uh, to reduce as much as I could just by tapping the column any out of alignment there to try and make sure that that is vertical in that plane. It seemed to be fairly vertical in the other plane. So that's been trammeled in uh, so that it's approximately right. And I will look at putting a plate onto the back to stiffen up that uh, rotating joint because I don't think I'm going to be doing that. I may look at other alterations to it but basically it's a mill. I got it from the Chinese supplier and it cost whatever it cost. So it shipped from the UK in a matter of a couple of days so the shipping speed was excellent. Really really good delivery time so I totally recommend that uh, and uh, it comes as it is there. Uh, just don't expect anything super from these low-cost mills. Uh, it's the geared drive one. It's the brushed motor. So it's not the super, but it's also rather less in terms of pounds than the super.
one uh, little issue I had was that this um, uh, ring here, the preload nut, which has a reverse thread so it tightens in an anti-clockwise direction onto the spindle. Uh, well, it wasn't tight, it was loose, it was very free. Anyway, uh, it's been turned anti-clockwise to tighten it and then the spring will run which I think uh, has an effect of tightening some more and there is a little grub screw in there and so what I've done is tighten up the grub screw locking it in place now I have no idea what the preload tension should be I'm told or read that if the preload is too large then the spindle will run warm and uh, it runs freely enough doesn't seem to present any that's with the play there's no friction tension in there just turns nice and easily and there's no movement of the spindle up down anyway I can't can't creak it or move it in anyway so presumably at least it's locked on now so it won't be spinning off in mid um, operation so uh, that's one little thing sorted on this uh, mini mill uh, where we've managed to get it into a functioning condition. So here we have this low-cost Chinese mill, very similar to the Clark CMD 300 mill, also the X2 mill, not the Super X2, but the original x2 mil seag seag x2 mil uh, some minor differences are they only have three uh, set screws to tension up the jib screws uh, i do like the handles i've said that before on them uh, this is the bottom casting of the base uh, quite substantial the column is uh, a casting I've taken the plate off the back so you can see it's actually hollow down the column at the back but still quite a heavy bit of casting and the thickness of the uh, depth inside is that there's that much meat underneath the uh, dovetails on it it's uh, clamped up quite tight now uh, it's been trued up on there. Almost useless scales. It does say, you know, the angle it's set to is about zero, but you know, it would say that and you'd still be several thousand out. Uh, so that's not, not much use. The horizontal scale there, well, I don't know, might be of use for something, but I don't know what use it is. But there we have it, uh, a fairly simple, straightforward on-off mechanism. Uh, red and green buttons to turn it on, forward reverse switch, variable speed control, pushing that in, uh, locks it in the off position. It is a no-volt release switch. I have checked that. So if you take the power off and then uh, put the power back on, then it is uh, in the off position as it starts and I've taken the plastic cover off the top of the uh, spindle there and there is a metal cover that goes on top of the motor which is off at the moment and a little cover that goes on the fine feed uh, which goes to the uh, device that controls the pinion to drive it in the z-axis direction up and down the rack so uh, that's it that's the deal I am not able to directly compare it with the uh, X2 or the Clark machine but I'm sure it is fairly similar it's uh, a very rough test of the machine um, it's just a piece of scrap aluminium uh, clamped the way it is Clearly, you've got potential for this to vibrate, uh, but 
that um, what I'm hoping is that um, we can just see that it does what it's meant to do in some ways, i.e. it cuts through a metal. Right, well, not the hardest of metals to cut. Uh, and what I've done is I've done a step cut. There's a bit of roughness there, uh, if it's in focus, which is obviously due to the fact that there's plenty of movement and variation. But we've got uh, a coarse cut there. And as some say, if you use a climb milling operation and go back again you could presumably clean up that cut that thing oh dear not very good there let's stop again well that's um the end of this cut here that depth there it was done with a single pass uh at a reasonable speed i've just been back the other way and depending on how clean you need the uh, end result to be what you've got there is rebates and these two bits here are not particularly well clumped together they're just held by uh, a couple of rivets at that end as I say if I step back from it what you can see is it's just a piece of scrap angle iron angled aluminium clamped in there uh, and I've just done an experiment to see how uh, well I can just cut in aluminium. No measurement, no setup, just clamp it on and take a couple of delicate test cuts to see that it will work. Uh, my very first cut that I did was just through a sheet of aluminium clad plastic material, uh, sort that I use for some building projects on the garden railway. And I just machined off the uh, some of the aluminium there. It was obviously not a level and flat piece of uh, sheet, uh, and that was just using the uh, end mill, uh, doing that very shallow cut into there, just to practice using the dials and practice doing some cutting on the machine. Nothing highly technical or scientific there, but just checking that this low-cost mini mill equivalent size to the X2 actually works and seems to do a job. <laughs>